service of CNC Worldwide. CNC Podcasts are a service of CNC Worldwide and brought to you by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 member companies with business solutions since 1984. The owner of the Buffalo Bills, Ralph Wilson Jr., has died at the age of 95. Wilson started the team in 1960 in the old AFL and decided to put it in Buffalo. He helped bring about the merger of the AFL with the NFL and continued the Bills as an NFL team. He has been the only owner the Bills have ever had. He's in the National Football Hall of Fame. Bills CEO and President Russ Brandon said at the NFL spring meeting that Ralph Wilson passed away quietly at home with his wife and daughters at his side. Brandon says the team has lost its founder, mentor, and friend. News of Ralph Wilson's death continues a bad week for the Buffalo Bills. Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly is expected to have more surgery in New York City this week for oral cancer. Kelly's wife says the cancer in his jaw is aggressive and starting to spread. The team says surgery may be Thursday or possibly April 1st. Kodak is putting Eastman Business Park up for sale. The former Kodak Park Complex cranked out millions of miles of film over the years, but it's no longer needed. Kodak has been redeveloping it as Eastman Business Park and leasing it out to technology firms. Kodak's new CEO, Jeff Clark, says the company doesn't want to be in the real estate business, so it's time to make a sale. In his statement, Clark says the park can best continue its transformation into a multi-tenant industrial facility through a company that's specifically focused on its redevelopment. Kodak will focus on its commercial imaging businesses. Eastman Business Park now has more than 50 tenants, including some Fortune 500 companies. The state has filed criminal charges against 10 employees of the Blossom Road Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Rochester. Attorney General Eric Schneiderman says six nurses and four assistants are charged with a pattern of neglect against a partially paralyzed amputee at Blossom North. They're charged with several felony and misdemeanor counts after a hidden camera caught them ignoring his care and falsifying records to cover up. Schneiderman says his office began investigating after the bedridden man's son contacted them. Rochester School Board President Van Henry White says the district is revising its policies on student safety and reporting incidents after several recent events. He says those include the recent conviction of a former phys ed teacher, recurrent fights at Northeast and Northwest high schools, and proposed revisions to the district's policy on reporting suspected child abuse. Federal prosecutors say a Brighton man will spend five years on probation and pay more than $82,000 in restitution to victims of a mail fraud scheme. The U.S. Attorney's Office says 79-year-old John Zedanikus was convicted of soliciting investors to put their money into a commodities trading pool. Instead of investing their money, though, Zedanikus spent it on himself. He was caught by FBI agents. An asbestos contractor will spend the next six years in prison and he has to pay a total of $344,000 in fines and restitution for violating the Clean Air Act. The U.S. Attorney's Office says a jury found Keith Gordon Smith guilty of failing to notify the EPA before his company started removing asbestos from the Cobbles Elementary School in Penfield. The trial found his failure to notify the environmental regulators was deliberate, not simple carelessness. U.S. Attorney William Hochul says Gordon Smith did work on several projects, including schools, colleges, and the Genesee Hospital complex in Rochester, all without notifying federal inspectors. The next CNC podcast is whenever you click on one of our pages and catch one, we post updates through the day as necessary. And I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News. <laughs>